Good morning. Please stand and join me in the reading of our opening words of praise from your bulletins or on your screens. The world belongs to God, the earth and all its people. How good it is, how wonderful to live together in unity. Love and faith come together. If Christ's disciples keep silent, these stones would shout aloud. Open our lips, O God, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Good morning. You may remain standing if you would like to join us. Uh, we invite you to join us in singing our opening hymn, 838, Standing on the Promises. Please join me in prayer as we invite God's presence into our hearts and minds together with the words of Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. 
If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in God's word I hope. More than those who watch for the morning. And now, let us pray in silence, centering our whole being in God's presence. Change my heart. to celebrate God's grace and forgiveness as we hear once more from the psalmist. O people of God, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love. And with God is great power to redeem. It is God who will redeem us from all our iniquities. The peace of Christ be with you. Please greet those around you sharing the peace of Christ or by commenting on screen at this time. Friends, our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Ruth, chapter 1, and you can find that on page 241 of your Old Testaments and your Red Pew Bibles if you like to follow along. Let us listen for God's holy word. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem and Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malan and Kilian. They were Ephratites from Bethlehem and Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died. 
and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other Ruth. When they had lived there about ten years, both Malan and Kilian also died, so that the women, woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you, in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth, she said, Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Where your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. And so when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. Sisters and brothers, this is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Somehow 
This world has lost its grip on me. You want me. Somehow you want me. The king of heaven wants me. So this world has lost its grip on me. God, you don't need me. But somehow you want me. Oh, how you love me. Somehow that frees me to take my Somehow you want me, the King of Heaven wants me. So this world has lost its grip on me. Amen. Thank you, Sienna. Thank you very much for that beautiful music for Thomas. Uh, also leading us in music this morning for Amy as our liturgist, for Dan and Steve and Donna running sound and video, for our ushers and greeters, thank you. Uh, for all of you joining us here this morning, uh, it is great to be here once again. You know, the pastor leaned forward in the pulpit making eye contact with those uncomfortably fidgeting in their pews on this hot Sunday. He said, you think this is hot? <laughs> now, for those of you wondering, uh, Holy Ghost fans uh, can have a variety of options here for the bulletin, so feel free to wave on your neighbor to spread the Holy Ghost throughout the room this morning. Thank you. This week, the state of Oregon will, quote-unquote, go back to normal. As the restrictions and guidelines for many of us will be lifted. In many ways, people will say that the pandemic of 2020 is now over here in Oregon. In July of 2021. But there is something interesting that I've been observing these past few weeks and months now as... The state in our nation reopens its businesses and societal structures. It seems there are some that are leaping at the opportunity to throw down their masks and move forward so that we can, quote, get back to normal, end quote. Still others are much more cautious with such attitudes, as they have every right to be, after all, aren't there still people getting sick? And what about these variants we hear about? And how do we care for those who have yet to be vaccinated and are still at risk, those especially younger children and the vulnerable? And if we're all being honest here, let's also admit that there have been some positives when it came to the last 15-plus months of restrictions. Many families spent a lot more time together than before. Rush hour traffic became an easily discarded memory. People united over some wonderful causes that have forever changed the landscape of our current society. And we also have to admit that we have united over some really ridiculous TV shows like Tiger King. Heck, introverts rejoiced in not having to come up with new excuses to back out of social engagements. It seems that it is not as easy, however, as flipping the switch. And all of a sudden, the world turns right side up. And everyone just goes back, just as they had in the year 2019. People are complex creatures with complex emotions and thoughts. 
And spoiler alert, June 30th will not be the same as it was back in June 30th of 2019. We all are different after experiencing what we have experienced. Our lives are forever changed. So how do we pick up the pieces when life goes awry? How do we move forward following tragedy? That's what today's story of Ruth is all about. How two women moved forward in life following a series of events that would otherwise knock down the average person. Just previously, I read a few verses from the opening chapter of the book of Ruth, and so now I invite you to reflect with me on these two women, in particular, Naomi and Ruth as they confront the tragedy of their lives. I wonder what it was like to be in their shoes. I wonder what kept them moving forward, even when fortune seemingly abandoned them for good. How do we pick up the pieces in life during such challenging experiences and times? And how will we pick up the pieces in the year 2021? We read today from the first chapter of Ruth, a short story compared to the others in the Bible about a woman named Naomi and her daughter-in-law named Ruth. Now, there are many different directions we could take such a story of time aloud. However, for for today's purposes, I'd like for us to reflect on the resilience of Naomi and Ruth following that tragedy of losing not one, but three family members who, by all accounts, were the providers of the family back then. Here is Naomi, a mature woman who has already escaped famine, now living in the land of Moab with her family in order to find enough sustenance for a livelihood, only to have tragedy strike once again with the death of her husband. And if that is not enough, both of her sons are subsequently taken from her as well. She's now left to fend for herself in a strange land she knows little about, along with her two daughters-in-law who likewise find themselves in a precarious situation. Naomi gives permission to her daughters, Orpah and Ruth, to return to their families where there's safety and security for them. Perhaps a new beginning as well. Her plan will be to return to her native land of Judah. And so Orpah respects Naomi's decision, and she heads back to her family. But Ruth is steadfast in remaining with Naomi as she recites those now famous poetic words, Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me and more as well if even death parts me from you. And while Naomi may not understand what all is happening in the moment, and Ruth may not understand all that is happening and all the implications of such a decision, and I'm sure the average Joe walking down the street at the time may not understand why in the world Ruth would rather commit to an uncertain future ahead with Naomi and Judah rather than return to the safety and security of her family, God works. In the midst of these poetic words, as perhaps they communicate a longing and promise that is more universal than merely between two women who have experienced tragedy and loss. Perhaps these words of Ruth speak into our hearts and our lives today as well. Ruth's words reverberate the soul of not only her or Naomi, but the very soul of the people of God. 
You see, in Ruth's decision to remain with Naomi, it set off a chain of events that led these two women back to Judah, where Ruth would meet a relative of the family named Boaz, who would restore this surviving family back to well-being. Both Boaz and Ruth would eventually be married and bear a child, and this child would continue the lineage that provided for King David and even for Jesus himself all because of a decision back in Moab by Ruth to remain with Naomi following those harrowing days. You see, we are each connected in God's web of creation. And this is our good news this morning. Our decisions, as small as they may seem at the time, have significant ramifications for the larger world around us. God moves within these small decisions of life. And so as we are invited to pick up the pieces of our own lives today, whatever that may look like to each of you, we are reminded of God's presence even in the smallest and simplest of decisions and actions. Naomi didn't know what the future held for her. But God was there. Ruth had no idea of what would become of her and Naomi as they left for a new land, but God was there. Today for us, Valley Community, we may not know how our lives will unfold in the months and years ahead following such a traumatic period, but God has been there with us through it all. God is here with us now, and God will be with us as we move forward. God is here. Look, I don't know what the future will hold. That's the million-dollar question everyone is asking these days. What will happen with our schools, our workplaces, and our churches? When will people feel safe and comfortable enough to return to worship in the sanctuary they had in 2019? Will our churches ever be the same? But here is my hope. I hope our church doesn't look the same as it did back in 2019. Because if we truly embrace the good news that God has been with us as we have picked up the pieces of our lives, as we have made the tough decisions in our lives, as we have suffered and survived through life's trials and tribulations, as we have grown in humility and self-awareness, then we should understand that no one is going to come out of such experiences the same after walking with God through all of that. No, we have been strengthened by God's word in our hearts. We have been fortified for the journey ahead. We have been transformed by the very Spirit of God moving throughout our holy bodies. In Jesus Christ, we are new creations. Not the same old creations as before. And for this, friends, we say thanks be to God who is forever with us as we make the tough decisions of life as we pick up the pieces following tragedy, as we move forward in faith together, side by side. And for this, may all of God's children say, Alleluia, amen. We invite you to stand with us and sing hymn number 324 for all the faithful women. Shall 
Please stand and join me in affirming our faith together as one community of faith. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. no. All these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For we are convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor prayers, no pot, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us now enter into a time of prayer. Lord, on this day we are reminded of how we are all united as your children, each of us connected to one another, a mysterious and holy web of creation. And so when one of us struggles, each of us feels the pain and suffering in our own unique way. When one of us is empowered to step forward, we step forward together. We recognize that this world is not as perfect as we would like it to be, perhaps as you would like it to be. Violence in all its forms continues to plague humanity. There's loss and devastation, both natural and human-made. Most loving creator, we pray for your mercy, your grace, and healing in the midst of such brokenness in our lives in this world. And so we pray especially for the people of Sudan, Somalia, India, and those victims in Miami. We pray for this nation and our leaders, the downtrodden and marginalized, all together making up what we call these United States. We pray for this city of Portland that continues to strive to realize its truest ideals as a place of welcome and unity, even as we battle economic and social injustices in all of its forms. We pray for those throughout the West Coast who struggle and are subject to this heat wave, especially those who are most vulnerable in such conditions. Lord, we pray for this valley community, our friends and our family, ourselves. We pray especially for Emma, Sue, Mary, Brian, Judy, Katie, and Robert. And we pray for those who mourn, for Ann Miller and the family of Chuck Miller for the friends and family of Ralph Holt, for Jamie Marchanke and the family of Kathy Marchanke, for Carol Lind and the family of Bob Lind, for friends and family of Annabelle Bednars, for Lyle Chadwick and the family of Judy Chadwick, for Galen Euchre and the family of Joan Euchre, and for those names and faces on our hearts and in our thoughts this morning. And so today, Lord, we pray together, using the words your Son taught us together, saying in the language or form most familiar to us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So friends, we come to a time in our service where we have the opportunity to respond to God's love and grace in our lives through our offerings of our time, our talents, and our treasures. And this Sunday, we're going to reintroduce the ushers coming forward to receive any offering you may have 
in your hands. Uh, you can also continue to mail in your regular offering to the church office where it will be processed as, re as received. And then finally, for those of you, especially those watching online this morning, um, if you'd like to give electronically, you can always visit www.valleycommunity.org where there is a Give Now option. So will the ushers please come forward and let us receive this morning's offering with joy. Let us pray, most holy and loving God. We are so thankful for the opportunity to serve as your hands and feet. And so, Lord, we ask these offerings of our time, our talents, and our treasures to be blessed by you, to be realized by you, and so that we may continue to be equipped and empowered to serve on your name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Closing hymn is 853, We Are Marching in the Light of God. Um, we invite you to stand and sing with us. Please note that we will first sing the Zulu, starting Sia Hamba. Um, then we'll sing the English. Then Thomas will serenade us, and we will close out with the Zulu once again.
I'm a little overzealous here. Okay. Siya ham aku kanyan kwenko. 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 Siya ham ba ham ba siya ham ba. Amen, amen. Friends, we are great to see you all here this morning. Uh, just remind that we are here each and every Sunday morning at 10 a.m., so whether you are watching online or you are here in person, it is great to be worshiping alongside of you. Now, please join me in the final charge and benediction is found in your bulletins. These words from the Ionic Abbey community. May God, who is present in sunrise and nightfall and in the crossing of the sea, guide your feet as you go. May God, who is with us when we sit and when we stand, encompass us with love and lead us by the hand. May God, who knows your path and the places where you rest, be with you in your waiting, be your good news for sharing, and lead you in the way that is everlasting. Alleluia. Amen.